you for joining me today, Silas, on Talk Time. Thank you for having me here. And listen, this is so wonderful in your home environment. This such a pleasure evening. Mm -hmm. You look great. Thank you. And I have a little gift for you. Oh, thank you, Silas. I know you were browsing. Listen, you were browsing at the, at the store. I know you saw it, but I'll do it for you. Okay. Oh, you wouldn't believe it. I was. See? Simple. Nice wrapping. You know what you can wrap in five minutes? Oh, I know. I mean, but oh, solace. Oh. But, and, you know. Thank you. That's the evening, I think, that is to talk is about love. Yes. Love, eternal love, and love that we carry in our hearts. And me, if you ask me. To describe myself, I would describe myself as love. She's because beautiful. the most important in my life, it doesn't matter how many I love, but... Uh, <laughs> She's beautiful, thank you very much, Sala. It's so distinctive, Ladro, if mm -hmm. you notice, uh, they don't make it perfect, um, mm -hmm. Hollywood um, figurines, when you look at her, she's so natural, and mm -hmm. uh, she's probably thinnish because her face features, and it doesn't matter. She's not the most beautiful bride, every but your nose is up in the air. So, but girlfriend. every bride is beautiful. Every bride is oh, beautiful absolutely. on their wedding day. Absolutely. I want she's you to have beautiful. this. Thank to, you uh, so much. I know you're... That would be a gift for your marriage that happened how many? Five years ago. Five years, what <laughs> day? Five, uh, April 1st. April Fool's April's Day. April Fool's Day. Mm -hmm. Okay, nice to remember. Yes. It's coming up. Yes, she's beautiful. Ask me a question. Now. I will, Salas. Tell me about yourself. You're from Lithuania. Mm -hmm. How did you get here to Noonan, Georgia? You know, in Georgia, I came from Florida. The first I arrived was in Florida, St. Petersburg. Very, very small studio apartment. Uh, this one bed, you know, little counter. 23 years ago. And the reason why I came here, a lot of people think that, you know, how they come from a third world countries to make money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't that. <clears throat> I came here, I knew that I'm going to live here. And the scariest was, because I came here, I <laughs> knew only two words was, hello, and I'm tired. <laughs> Nothing else. I went to the gas station. I couldn't buy cigarettes because they asked me for a driver's license. I didn't have it. And I remember by sitting down, turning on TV, and when I saw English was like mm, one big word and I realized what have I done mm -hmm. and six months every evening I was just literally crying because you can imagine the first job uh, I was cleaning floors and toilets in the Kmart overnight locked up back then uh, did not have the legal right to work. It was a beginning of a new life. But time passed by, and here in Newton, I came, I don't even remember, six years ago? Mm -hmm. About six years ago, um, because of my partner, Robert. You no. Know? I was living very good in Tampa, actually. But I was so lonely. Mm -hmm. And I'm probably <clears throat> one of those people that I can be lonely. And that kills me, everything. Mm -hmm. My creativity. And here, 
I found what I was looking for. I found you. Mm -hmm. You always in my heart, doctor, doc, always in my heart. And to have friends and to be able to call in the middle of the night, that's probably the most valuable thing that you can even wish for yourself. Mm -hmm. Now, it must have been very difficult when you first got here because you were a very learned person. You had training, you had experience, and you came here and you said your first job was scrubbing floors. Yes, but that's what I was, <laughs> and back in my country I was living good actually. Mm -hmm. I had a beauty salon, I had graduated university, I had mm -hmm. everything, but I was running away and today I can honestly say I was running from myself. Right. I just, uh, I was hurt uh, with my love and I just wanted to go and just leave the streets that everything would change why I chose Florida, the trees didn't even remind me uh, where mm -hmm. I was and uh, seven years I had no right to come back. Uh, because I got the asylum mm -hmm. and first time I came back to visit was after seven years mm -hmm. and still I came back I, everything reminded me so much of what I left you cannot run from your past and we all have to pay sooner or later for what we done and that how we true. live and, it, and I have always learned through my experience that, you know, the one thing you can't run away from is yourself. Yourself follows you wherever you go. But we always try. We do. We, we do always try, try pretend, mm -hmm. and recently, you know, um, soon I'm going to be 50 years old and I'm finding myself like a teenager. Mm -hmm. uh, falling again for something, something beautiful, love. Right. Well, love is what is supposed to make the world go round. That's true. I mean... Everything what I am actually is because of love. Mm -hmm. Universities, it. my education, my uh, ability, I was very shy. Mm -hmm. Very, very shy when I was young, and I couldn't imagine even walking on the stage, and uh, I had to overcome that because I knew that someone who I'm in love uh, is watching me. Mm -hmm. And the worst of all that could happen when you fall in love with your best friend, and you cannot tell because if you're going to tell that you're in love, you're going to lose the best friend. Mm -hmm. But if you keep silent, sooner or later, you burn out. Right. So that dilemma lasted five years. And then two months of a beautiful time and 17 years to forget. Right. But life is full of surprises because we never know who is going to walk in the door next. Right. Like it happened to my recent adventure just realizing <clears throat> that as much as they hate it it was opposite right. somebody walked in the door as much as I wanted to resist I actually fell in love right. but <clears throat> Suzanne mm -hmm. what about you Oh, we're not talking about no, me. No, we're no, no. It's I, all about I understand. you, Solis. I understand. I, I'll be talking. You, you can you can see, you know. You, uh, don't give me to eat. Give me to talk. So I'll be talking. When you're talking, draw me three pages. Wait a minute. I have three, right? No, I have more. Here is the pen. Okay. Don't even think. Okay. First, draw a um, tree. Okay. On one page, on another one, a house, and mm -hmm. on the last one, human. You can be a face or anything. Okay, I'm and not we a can, very good drawer. <laughs> oh, the, no, no, this is, you know, mm -hmm. you can do uh, when I'm talking. Okay. Just ask me a question. Uh, well, my next question to you, Solace, 
is tell me you you have a very very artistic nature tell me what it was like when you were young when you were dancing it's expressing yourself literally you know I remember Robert asked me today I misplaced one of my diaries I write the diaries in, in a big book and they say never ever anyone who finds it don't read it because that's going to be someone can go insane just by reading that <laughs> but that is an expression of yourself and it feels like if I write or if I create something or uh, all of the artistic side is realization of what's inside right because I'm probably one of those people who never have the true face you know how someone can walk is just changing the masks mm -hmm. but that's sign of the I guess sensitive person afraid to not to be hurt and unfortunately that person gets hurt the most well that's always how it is I like a drawing I love dreams oh uh, can't wait to tell you something by any chance you're not pregnant no no chance I gave that up a long time ago so I was I had my two babies and I was done. Oh yeah, your, your, your son is still a baby. Yeah, he is. Oh, wait till he's going to bring the um, daughter-in-law. Oh, uh, I can wait for that. <laughs> Solace, what was it like the first time you got up on stage and you were dancing? It was fantastic. Were you it was afraid? 30, no. 36,000 people, mm -hmm. stadium. And it's amazing, the sound, I, my heart trembles to this day. All the worries was just before walking on stage, but then, second, you have to go on, you put your face smiling, and that was adrenaline, mm -hmm. I can't even explain, it. you know, when somebody is telling how much they enjoyed being on a stage is absolutely true because I do believe in energy and can you imagine all that energy from all surrounding thousands of people it just goes right through you and you just fly you do amazing things mm -hmm. you do and the lights and it depends I, I've been just on the New Year's five years in a row we were performing in Kreml in Moscow five years in a row Wow and I remember one trip we had 32 concerts in 16 days two concerts we did not have even time to change our regular clothes mm -hmm. one concert was in the morning in the afternoon and another one was in the evening so we were so tired we were sleeping on the, in the hallways on the carpet on the floor just to get ready for another concert but if nobody forced us right all of us we were 200 300 children all of us were fanatics you know they can school we didn't care but we had the tutors of course but stage I miss to this day but I'm on a stage here that's true <laughs> and, and whenever Enjoying. you know I used to be in the theater when I was younger and you know I just transformed my theater to the world you know the world became my stage mm -hmm. and you know um, that's what I did with mine now as you grew older you know because you did the the dancing and Who the performing when you were young you were what 13 14? oh no i started six uh, six years old six and I years start, old oh, yeah. oh wow mm -hmm. and how old were you when you left oh, dancing? 16 
going 18. Yeah. Wow. Almost 18. So almost, Whole life on the stage. Yeah. yeah. Trips, travel, travel, travel. I've been in every city in the ex Soviet Union. Then there was wow. 15 republics. I've been St. Petersburg, it's like my, uh, the city that I call of my youth, of my, it's amazing. I know Moscow, I know all the metro, you know, subways. Mm -hmm. I even remember the numbers and the stores and a lot of things. Well, tell me, you know, how was life growing up, you know, on the road and in the Soviet Union at the time? Because, I mean, up until that point, there hadn't been the, the turnover into... Oh, know. yeah, Soviet Union was absolutely amazing because the government, uh, regardless of whatever people would say, government was spending enormous money. That's why uh, the dancing group, one of the famous dancing groups in Soviet Union, was supposed, uh, war literally was closed due to no, no funds. Because during the Soviet Union, you can come in, like my teacher says, I need 200,000 rubles. And the government, there we go. There was no limit of expenditure. We were staying in the luxury hotels. Uh, we were charter planes. Mm -hmm. uh, absolutely treated as absolutely wonderful everywhere. And everything was covered. Everything was free. Uh, I couldn't even imagine better shopping. Now it's impossible because you have to you go know. and ask for sponsors and you know, the thousand there, thousand there. When you think about 200,000 rubles, then the monthly salary uh, was um, 80 rubles. Doctor was making 300 a month. So to wow. get 200,000, you know, but that was all performances, mm -hmm. you know, like, it was amazing that I had this experience, mm -hmm. but that's not all. <laughs> Tell me what came next after you left the stage. What came next in your life? Another stage. I started playing in the orchestra. Ah, what did you play? <laughs> Four years, how do you call it, a baritone? Uh -huh. um, in a Four years, and also <gasps> traveled again, again in the stage. I never walked off the stage. After the orchestra, I went to modeling on the stage. <laughs> right. And uh, now, let's create a stage over here. Right. So you know, Newton is very, uh, how to say, um, <clears throat> prospective, no, not that word, has a lot of potential. It does, it does. Because then you see the gap somewhere that you can fill, mm -hmm. it's always opportunity. Okay, next. Okay. Now you draw me a house. A house, okay. Mm -hmm. <gasps> Your drawing is completely going against all of my knowledge. Mm. This is, uh, I'll tell you uh, a little bit, this is, um, Usually, this is technique I study in the university. Uh, actually, um, the first time they show when I was working in a psychiatry clinic, the doctor of psychiatry clinic, he gave us, all of us, to do those drawings. And um, after he finished, he picked up all, it was 21 of us. He said, okay, four of us is gonna end it up here as a patient. <laughs> out of 21 and then we start learning what it shows actually uh, when you finish then I'll tell you it will be completely will give you give, give me a picture of you oh well not only of you is gonna give a picture of your past mm. it will give you a picture of what you are today and what is the waiting for you in the future well, I'm looking forward to that. I'm not a very good drawer at all. I don't draw very well. Oh, question, if you know people, uh, thank you for watching, people watching. So uh, if anybody wants to contact me, 
to make my days brighter. I am a very social person. You can find me on the Facebook. Facebook is easy. You enter my first name, last name, and I'm only one in Union. I'll be more than happy to meet someone. I'm lonely. Lonely. Mm, again. Solace, what do you do when you're lonely? Uh, what I do? Mm -hmm. I write. I write. I write. I like writing. And I do write. I write poetry. And um, what do I do? I go crazy. I go dumpster digging. Right. Well, tell me. How do you cope with things on a daily basis? You know, you write, and um, what are the what do you find are the main themes that you write about? What loneliness, the loneliness. last one, loneliness. I mm -hmm. see loneliness as a per person. It's not like a loneliness. It's like a old old woman with a bony, skinny fingers and comes to you, grabs you by the throat and squeezes, squeezes, and you can't breathe. Mm -hmm. And then, if at that state, at that moment, someone walks into that door that gives just a little drop of warmth and welcoming, you know, you go crazy. Mm -hmm. Because that's me, you know, I live by the rule if you love me love me well if you don't just go to hell so right but i would like to meet someone honestly well i found too that that silence to me is deafening i hate silence i used to when i lived alone and my children used to go away. I used to try to fill my home with as much noise because the silence yeah, was deafening. Yeah, you hear them. You know, um, and to me, silence is loneliness. Mm -hmm. You know, and not having access to anyone, you know, in that loneliness is, is just cold and dark. That's true. How do you combat your loneliness? You know, in your mind. Listen, I'm a bad, bad advisor on that. I go crazy. You go crazy. <laughs> okay. You know, and uh, you what know, is, it's just. But what uh, does that mean to you? What does well, crazy I can mean jump, to you? sit in the car, and drive. Mm -hmm. uh, doesn't even. Choosing a direction, just drive, drive until I find something. Mm -hmm. And usually it's nothing very, you know, some ending up in the bath house, a club, or uh, it's just we all human, you know. And Can then you know, all our lives is uh, with pleasures and regrets. So some of them uh, talking about, uh, we have to talk about it sexuality right it's a very important and a lot of people take that and they bury that into themselves and then comes out it can come out ugly because the desires if we don't learn to recognize them what we actually want and desire then we will have a big, big issues with that. I'm talking about myself. I always have that. Well, you know, I found that when I w had my my crazy time mm -hmm. per se, that you know, sex to me was was a form of punishment. You know, I was punishing hmm. myself by not, you know, indulging, or I was punishing myself by seeking out something I knew that would hurt me. And, you know, um, but sex to me was, I found out, was, was just an extension of the silence and the loneliness. 
because there's, to me, there's nothing worse than to, you know, be intimate with someone and still feel lonely. Oh, yeah. You can be surrounded by a thousand people and you can be uh, completely lonely as the person sleeping next to you. Right. But that's very interesting because, the, you know, the latest, I don't want to say adventure, it's the latest, my um, heartbreak, how to call it, he was also, he wanted to be hurt. And I didn't understood that. You know, for me, it's uh, something new. But when somebody is, has attraction or especially, you know, falling in love and wants to please, would do everything. Right. So that's, you know, me, uh, us. We then to extend, you know, to please someone in a way that probably would look strange to somebody. But anyway, what do you think? I got th hurt. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I got hurt badly. But not by not knowing, it looks like I read every book, study so much, but then when it came to myself, that was Really, really, really. Important is, this is very important. Important is only the things that we don't know. The things that we know about it is not important anymore. Well, what do you think that yes. um, the attraction is? You know, you had a recent indulgence in BDSM. Mm -hmm. What do you think is that's that what confused me? Right. I don't know what confused me, because if I had the opportunity to know more, mm -hmm. uh, what I did wrong, what I did right, uh, maybe I wouldn't feel so bad. Right now, I feel terrible. I feel guilty, honestly, and I feel like I hurt someone, and by not wanting. Instead, it, it, it's opposite. I want, I wanted to love so much. I wanted to uh, be affectionate. It's so funny that uh, I am that kind of person. I never like hugging, you know, cuddling. Never ever in my life. This time, that's all I wanted to do. And I know I had to play the role of uh, evil and then I wanted to just so much to love, mm -hmm. just hug and just all the time I just wanted to touch and feel. touch and, 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 uh, and I did opposite. And that anger, number one, that I am twice as older, that's a big anger inside. Uh, another thing that um, I am falling for someone that I know sooner or later is going to leave. Mm -hmm. All that anger was building inside of me and expressing in a way that you shouldn't, that I start hurting not only physically, physically it's not like physic, uh, physical pain, I guess it's a, sometimes it's a pleasure to have physical pain, but emotional pain. Mm -hmm. where to find the boundaries, how to manage the, um, let's say, abuse, not abuse, I don't like that word. Let's say um, you are, um, how you call the, you're the master, mm -hmm. let's say. Where is the limit? How to find the limit? Then you can hurt someone and where is the limit that you don't hurt, you just give a pleasure. See, I never been exposed to that and mm -hmm. I didn't know and the person is gone to tell me, you know, I would give everything that he would just come back and say this and this and this and only one thing and he just disappeared was explanation. He sent me a text message hours, it was 
people driving all around the street. Looking for him, he said, I got scared a little bit. And after that, not even a word. And I saw on the street, he refused even to look in my eyes, but I know no one in my life comes without a reason. So, mm -hmm. and I do believe that it's not the end. To you, darling. Thank you, Sal. Sweets is good. Mm -hmm. If nothing else, we have cookies to enjoy. Now, Solace, mm -hmm. you also are a very, very good cook. How and when did you learn to cook? By traveling. Mm. It's my hobby. You know, I see I was exposed to so many different cuisines to so many different countries. I like to experiment. I never measure. I never, you know, like a cook has to be done this way, this way. No, you just don't. Sense, and especially here in Georgia, mm -hmm. everybody has a garden. I mm -hmm. didn't see your garden yet. We'll go one day. Mm. Well, there's I'll not much the left. Hmm. What is your comfort food? What gives you comfort to eat? Everything that has a dill in it. Mm. Mm. Mm hmm. Meatloaf. Mm hmm. Nice homemade meatloaf. With shredded carrot salad. Mm. That's that's beautiful. Yeah, mine is. I like fried chicken. Fried chicken is one of my comfort. Can foods. you believe it? That first burger I ate when I arrived here. Mm -hmm. I was 23 years old. I ate first burger. First black person I saw it on the plane at 23. He was sitting there, and I was like, "Oh my mama!" and I, I want to, you know, touch it. Right. It was whole. I, the plane, back then, you could smoke. Mm -hmm. One man was smoking cigars, drinking brandy. Was completely freedom on a plane. And I was wearing big, long coat with a mink lapé. Mm -hmm. Arriving in Florida, <laughs> January. Mm. Mm. But it wasn't cold. Mm. Not I don't know what happened to my coat. Oh, it was a journey. Mm. It was a journey. Yeah. You were talking about taking a trip. Where are you going? I'm going back to Lithuania. Hopefully, I'm dreaming, and hopefully, someone will sponsor me. My sisters maybe said it, but you know, to go to St. Petersburg. I want to go to St. Petersburg for main reason, I want to see a doctor, mm -hmm. Dr. Konobalov, that I'm following his beliefs, his science, about um, energy, about the universe, and you know, all of the, that so much gave me, because the most important was this year, my accomplishment, I quit drinking. That was something that I couldn't imagine that will ever happen. And I was thinking, how much effort I'm going to have to put to actually quit? There was no effort. I woke up. Actually, that morning, after filming a um, commercial, mm -hmm. I woke up and I said, no more. I don't want it. And even... Uh, to this day, there is a bottle of wine mm -hmm. open in a crystal carafe, and I just don't have a. And also going through all of these emotions, I was so afraid that uh, will trigger, you know, the all the I call it meat grinder. But no, it didn't, and that's because of um, his teachings. I read about fifteen books already and they all in Russian and he has a seminars uh, twice a year mm -hmm. so he'll probably have a seminars in but he, you can meet in person mm -hmm. in St. Petersburg but the crowds is like 10,000 people but with our connections through the teacher we could 
meet him personally and going towards but mm -hmm. I would love to if I accomplish that also I want to see observatory they mm -hmm. have a, a biggest is observatory museum that's a whole complex of the uh, how the scientists anyway that's the one I want to see and of course to be with my parents I'm gonna arrive there I'm gonna be you know my mom gonna be eating every mm -hmm. 30 minutes mm -hmm. time adjustment is seven hour difference it's gonna take a couple of days to adjust to the time mm -hmm. then a show last year if you remember we had a love ball of love mm -hmm. and we're talking already this year to do ball of love 2019 oh. no 2018 and the team we want to do Arabian Nights. Oh, that'll be lovely. And that we can have a big set of big white tents on a sandy beach oh, at wow. night and having all outside depending on the weather and of course depending on the money. But this time mm -hmm. they got a taste last year. This year I don't have to do much to accomplish that. They're already waiting for me. Uh, I already bought a series, beautiful embroidered. Suzanne, let me tell you a little bit about you. This is technique, like I said, is to show um, what a person went through. For example, the house shows your um, childhood, your past. Mm -hmm. Childhood, usually people draw a basement. So, not drawing a basement uh, on the house, it shows that the childhood did not left very big impression onto you, somehow was probably suppressed. Um, very important, windows, very important, the curtains. So, everything in detail. How many of you in the family? In my immediate family? I mean, your mama, your dad. And me. Just yeah. one? Mm -hmm. I'm the only child. Oh, interesting. Who is the fourth one? Uh, mm. Someone. And uh, the road, uh, the chimney, you can see by the lines, the ones, uh, they're not sharp. It's something in the childhood that was, you were detached. Like this one, you know, like a glued on it, so something, well, I'll put it this way, you were lonely in the childhood. Mm -hmm. that's, let's put it this way. You were lonely and you were waiting for someone, I don't know who, but you were waiting for maybe your husband to mm -hmm. come in. But you had the dreams, you had, a, uh, every day you were, thinking that someone will come and take you away through one of those windows. <laughs> Here, that's the most confusing thing. Usually, when uh, someone draws, how you call this? A nod in a tree. Nod in a tree? Mm -hmm. That shows pregnancy. No. Oh. Usually. But, uh, you see, maybe something, you know, inside of you is Telling you, no, it tells that you a very caring mother. That's, you know, just all motherhood. So, mm -hmm. uh, most important is your children and, uh, how about your daughter? Maybe that could be of mm -hmm. hers. No, Did she's, you? no, she's better not be pregnant. <laughs> Find out. She just better ask. not be. Just ask. Mm -hmm. Falling leaves, and very few. Uh, you worry. You try to get off of your worries, but you can't because it's still detached. And of course, you're feeling you scatter. Look at your branches. You all. That's about you. You're all over there, but. Deep inside, 
you have some anger mm -hmm. deep down because see this sharp grass is foundation for the tree mm -hmm. so if you get that anger and frustration off your tree will start blooming Mm. Again. And this is you. Mm. Perfectly. People draw a human. This is you. Look. Smiling. That means you're not smiling inside. It's completely opposite. Mm. That means inside you feel sadness. And it shows that you have um, physical from like a bath, mm -hmm. if I wouldn't know that, it would, you know, whole structure of the body that you draw is oh. neck is, you know, almost no neck and oh, you're here. You want to change something about yourself, a look maybe, mm -hmm. do you think, you know, I changing? Think. Well, anyway, then you Put your hands where it belongs, meaning that you use your hands wisely, creating something, then you're truly going to be smiling. Right now, that smile is not the smile that actually is inside of you. Hmm. That's all at this time I can tell about you. Uh, of course, if I look more and more, usually I take this, I flip it over and start writing, I look mm -hmm. at it several times. And if, even if I look, you know, my notebooks, I do have it, you know, about that, drawings. And, but you see how uh, progressed the tree was the first. You were still nervous, then you, had the house. Now the lines mm -hmm. is much smoother except something in your childhood that you want not happy. And probably the fourth one is the one window that you were waiting for someone. Someone to come in and save you. Mm. And a human is so small. Mm. So small. Next time draw a big one. <laughs> right. Ooh! That's your drawing? Yeah. You kidding? No. That's something. I didn't expect one. I'm not a good drawer, Silas. But look, yourself. This picture, that's you. That's not a very pretty picture. <laughs> <laughs> I want to show to. That's scary. <laughs> so much inside of you. I never noticed that you have anger for whatever reason. Inside of the frustration and anger. See those probably from a side, it looks like sadness, but in reality, you know, look at this. You, you, have this blocked anger and untouchable and your eyes are full of tears. You need to talk to someone to tell what that anger is, what that frustration is, something you're not satisfied, something hurting you. I don't know what, but it does. Mm. Write your name on each of the page and put the date on it because I'm going to ask to draw this when I'm going to come back from a trip. Okay. And we're going to draw another face, we're going to draw something else. But this is, that's how, uh, when I took Jonathan's picture, it was exactly the same shock and me, I didn't even know you draw another one on the back. Mm. It was shocking. Shocking. Look, no body, just the face. Mm. 
Uh -huh. So, so nice to talk. I can talk all night. What's the overall? What's the purpose? What is the purpose, Alice? What is the purpose? If we would know the purpose, ah, to be happy. That's what I think. Purpose. I think we all want the same thing, just to be happy in every way. And the most important to me, what I cannot take it, fake people, fake smiles, lies. I just, those things is just, I'm not angry, it just hurts me. Mm -hmm. Because I see it and every day I see it. Every day what I do and in every step. And that's why I really appreciate you. <laughs> Being yourself and I appreciate this wonderful thing, you know, talking. And when you talk and that's what set up different that you can talk mm -hmm. not to be judged no. and be truthful to yourself I would call it confession you know that it's any confession is healing it is it's good for the soul that's why when I write uh, put it on a paper it's like a type of a confession that I feel better mm -hmm. and let this show be uh, how to call it letters to the truth or something oh, philosophical anyway thank you so much thank you so, oh, much. so wonderful is there anything you'd like to say in closing that you wish to tell people? I'm still young. I'm still kicking. And I want to be, to meet someone and to be in love again. That's what anyone who sees me and finds me a little bit attractive, the rest of it, I can promise I'll be the best <laughs> as you wish. Yeah, that's a fake optimistic. But that's my final. This love and for love mm. to the future. Well, Solace, thank you for coming here and talking with me tonight mm. and sharing your ideas about my drawings and talking to us about your life. Everyone, this is Suzanne Spence Talk Time, and we hope that you will join us on the next show. Thank you and good night. Thank you. Good night.